Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of shea butter, which is a little bit different than the types of videos like this I do, since this is all about topical use, but shea butter is great. And ever since I got this last batch in this yellow color, I'll talk about in a little bit. Even though I've been using shea butter for years, when I got this last batch of the yellow shea butter, it caused me to do a little bit more research into shea butter and learn more about it and it was and it's always fun to learn more about such things so i wanted to share this with you so first let's start off um where does it come from well it comes from the nut of the shea tree just like it sounds it's shea butter <laughs> and it is native to west africa you can actually find shea butter in many different shades but its natural color is going to vary from an ivory like you see here to a light yellow. And I've had both. I've had I've had some that were more of a light yellow and some that were more of an ivory like this one right here. Well, this last batch I got, I'd never seen this color before. And I was thinking it looked really unnatural and it kind of freaked me out because it was one I got from Halal every day. You know, it said it was a product of Ghana and all that and you know, pure and natural and so on. And so I thought, I better look into this and then come to find out this is a common color, but it's not the natural color of shea butter. It, it'll never be this color naturally. But what this is, is when you find it in this color, it's really common, especially in certain areas of Africa, for them to add, it's uh, it said the bark, but I'm wondering if it comes more from the root or the inner part of the tree, of the Boratutu tree. And I was, I'll put a couple pictures here so you can see what it looks like. And the benefit to that is not only to do some people like the brighter yellow color that it turns it, it also adds even more benefits because boro tutu is naturally antioxidant which also means it's anti-aging it is antibacterial and very detoxifying so it can, it just adds even more benefits to what is already in the shea butter on its own now i'm going to list off some of the nutrients and active ingredients you're going to find in shea butter and that is linoleic steric palmitic and oleic fatty acids plus vitamins a e and f you've got the triglycerides which are really great for the skin and the cetyl esters that are really great for the hair so now let's talk about the benefits of using shea butter and then we'll talk a little bit on ways that you can use shea butter so the great thing about shea butter, it is safe for most people. There are some people that are allergic to shea nuts. So obviously in that case, that would be something they would need to avoid. Just like people who are allergic to any kind of bee product, can't have beeswax. So obviously you got to figure out what's going to work best for you as well. And if shea butter isn't a good choice, there's things like mango butter and more that you can try instead. It's a great moisturizer for all skin types. So even though it's very thick, I'll show you here, you can see it's very thick. I would suggest maybe using it as a night cream if you're gonna use it plain. It can be used for very oily skin. For I would still recommend possibly mixing it with something like coconut oil, which is a little more drying, if you don't like the thickness of it on your skin, especially when using it on your face. Uh, it is naturally anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and antibacterial, just like the Borotutu tree, and antifungal. It helps to boost collagen production. It also promotes cell regeneration. It may help reduce the appearance of stretch marks, scarring, fine lines, and wrinkles. It offers a small level of sun protection, just like coconut oil. It's got an SPF of about three to four. Now, if you're interested in more about natural sun protection things you can use because that stuff you buy in a store, you should stay away from. But I did a video several years back on various different things that you can use that are totally natural, coconut oil and more. I do believe I included shea butter in there as well, some other oils. So please go check that video out. I'll link to it in the description box down below if you'd like to learn more. 
Now, shea butter is also really good for very dry hair. So this can be applied, like sometimes I will apply it to the ends. Usually I use it since it's something that's always in my skin cream. A lot of times I just use my regular skin cream and apply that to the ends of my hair, sometimes all over my hair because I do have very dry hair. Usually curly hair is by nature, it tends to be drier anyway. And the curlier it is, the drier it is. So not only is it very conditioning to the hair, but it helps prevent breakage. Also, when rubbed into the scalp, it's good at reducing dandruff, but also can soothe other skin ailments such as eczema and psoriasis. It's also good for treating things like bug bites and stings, sunburns or other types of like first degree burns minor abrasions, and other superficial wounds. It can actually help relieve arthritis pain and sore muscles as well. And this one I thought was really interesting. You can melt it down and add it to your nasal drops if you use something like that, and then put a couple drops in your nose and it will help clear your nasal passages and reduce inflammation. Because remember, it's anti-inflammatory. Now here are a few ways that you can use shea butter. Now, as I already mentioned, it is something that I have been adding to my homemade skin cream, which I do have a couple recipes out there. I'll link to down below my most recent video and you can see what all I use in there. The shea butter itself only makes up one sixth of it, but for people who could have shea butter but not beeswax, what I would recommend is going maybe, is just varying your amounts because the other ingredients include the infused oil, coconut oil, and the shea butter itself. So you could either, you could simply up the amounts of the shea butter to get that thicker consistency you would want in a skin cream. I would say even just use equal amounts, shea butter, infused oil, and coconut oil. I think that, I haven't tried it yet, but I think that would make a pretty good consistency for a skin cream, but it's all going to be individual. You can always, if you want it thinner than that, you can always increase the amount of the infused oil or whatever oil, it doesn't have to be infused. Or if you want it even richer, increase the amount of shea butter. Um, I've actually used it to make soaps. One thing I found is when I add it to soaps, I usually just maybe in a regular batch that I'm gonna make, which makes a little better than six bars. It's, it's a smaller batch than what most people would make. Then in that, when I do use shea butter, I would put just a quarter cup of that into the mixture. But the one thing I found is you don't want to add it right away with your other fats. It's I found it's best to let it mix a little bit first, then add the shea butter in because it causes the soap to want to set up a lot quicker. So it's nice in that way. And then it also adds more um, benefits to your soap when you use it. It can also be added to the healing salve. Now I have a healing salve recipe that I used in that one. I decided to use mango butter because I had it on hand, but shea butter would be excellent in that as well because of its natural healing properties. You can use it in making lip balm. I've actually used the the shea butter plain just right on my lips like that it's got a nice consistency for that just as is so you don't even have to mix it with anything if you don't want to it, and then as mentioned it can be used as a hair treatment and it just like with the other things if you feel it's too thick just as is thin it out with something like coconut oil or avocado oil or grapeseed oil or some other type of very healthy oil and then you can just you just rub it between your palms and then Work it, start with your ends, and then if you need to smooth down the top, because so, sometimes the top part layers of my hair can get pretty frizzy, and that will help smooth it out and condition it as well. And it's really excellent for babies, so it's great to use in a diaper cream. In fact, I just did a video recently on making a homemade diaper cream that includes shea butter. And it's great. It's working really good for, for Jace because, you know, he's, like I said in that video, his skin is more sensitive. So we got to keep up on it. And it's been working great using that. So if you're interested in that recipe, go check it out. But I also, it's not just one recipe. I shared several variations of a diaper cream recipe that I got from other sites. So it can help you kind of decipher what's going to be best for you when it comes to making something like that up. But again, shea butter, excellent, excellent for baby skin. And as always, I do like to open up the floor for people to come share their experience with whatever it is I'm talking about. So if you use shea butter and you've used it in things, you've used it in different ways, you've used it to help heal something, please share with us down below because your testimonials and your thoughts and ideas 
uh, just help broaden our horizons on how to use a lot of these great things that we have on hand. And I'm actually going to put this in my playlist of herbs where I do profiles because it really kind of fits in there. So check out that full playlist if you'd like to learn more about all the many different herbs and things that are out there and how you can use them and how healthy they are for you. And remember, I've been working on that playlist for well over six years now, so it's getting pretty big. And one more thing I need to add. This right here, I brought this out and I forgot. You can see it's not quite as yellow as that. Well, and the, the picture on there looks like it's almost the same as yellow. But this is actually a mixture of, of the yellow shea butter and some avocado butter. I just mixed them together so I could try it out. And I've been using that on my feet and my knees, my elbows, anything that's really super dry. And I'm really liking that. So uh, just a way to kind of thin it out. By the way, those of you who have really, really fair skin, you might not want to use the yellow shea butter straight on your face. It could turn it yellow temporarily. Not not like turmeric. It wouldn't. It probably wouldn't stain it as much as turmeric does. I've used to straight on my face and it didn't stain. So just a little pointer on there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.